you ask God for something, you expect God just to move right away? Oh God, I believe your word and I'm trusting in you and, you, and it doesn't happen on day one. Well, maybe, maybe, God, maybe your word isn't you and you throw the towel on God and get upset and stop coming to church and stop praying and stop fellowshipping and stop reading his word. What are you doing? No. The delay is built into the Christian journey. <laughs> sure you call is. yourself a Christian, you will experience delay. Every time. That's right. I experienced a delay. Two years ago, today, today, two years ago, today, my daughter was born. 16 weeks early. And we cried out to God. God, what are you doing? What's happening? And, and God spoke a word to me. God said, Seth, I am able to heal her, and I will heal her. I remember right where I was sitting, right in the place, and he spoke a word to me, and it was so crystal clear. And I got up from that place, and I went back into the hospital room with my wife, and I, I had such confidence I didn't want to hear a shred of doubt. If you did not believe, do not come around me. And 143 days later, she was finally released from the hospital. She had endured heart surgery, and two brain surgeries. She was finally released from the hospital. And I felt like, God, I hear you. I believe your word, you're going to do it. The delay wasn't 143 days. The delay that started, the delay started when we left the hospital. Because we left the hospital, we left the hospital with so much hope and promise that she would meet all of her milestones and that she was going to be able to do all the things that, that, that the, uh, a child that is born without, without complications would be able to do. And, and we believed God for that, but then milestones started blowing by her. And one milestone blew by and another milestone blew by and, and, and it appeared as though that she wasn't getting better, but that she may just be slowing down and maybe even getting worse. We took her to the doctors and, and to the different therapists, and, and then the, the reports continued to come in. They, they diagnosed her with a, a, a moderate level of cerebral palsy. There was clear muscle tone in her, on her left side where she, couldn't, she didn't have the full mobility of her left hand and, and her left arm, and, and her feet were, 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 were always pointed down so that whenever she tried to walk, she was on her tippy toes. And so they, they said, we want her to get braces that will keep her feet on a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a straight position that will hopefully help uh, strengthen her, her ability to stand at one point. And, and, and the delay happened, y'all. And from September of 2013 to now, we've been in this delay. And I've been saying, God, I don't, I wasn't wrong when you told me what you told me. I knew what your word said, but my present circumstances does not bear witness to what you said. I mean, yes, there is a moderate level of health and we're grateful she's alive and she's able to do certain things and, and that she's able to have a certain level of independence. But God, this is not what I asked for. I didn't ask for just let us get by. No, I talked about full recovery, God. If you're going to do it, do it all the way. Don't, don't half step this thing. That's what you responded to. That's what you declared to me that you were able and willing to do. So why is it that the present circumstances are not in alignment with what your word told me? And we wrestled with this for a year and a half, if not longer. And, and in the wrestle, in the wrestle, the wrestle, my wife was at, woke up one morning at maybe 2 o'clock in the morning, and she was wrestling with this, the reality of our situation. And like any good mother feeling, wishing that she could do, have done more, she said, I wish I would have told the doctors that I had uh, a possible 
predisposition to this based off of uh, family history. I wish I would have asked the doctors to go in when I started feeling some things in my body shifting and changing. I wish I could have done something. And, and, and at 2 o'clock in the morning, she went into this, 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 this place of, of regret and remorse for, man, if I would have just done enough, she cried out to God. And God answered. Mm. He always does when you're in the delay. Listen to this. Like, like when you're going through a delay and you're sincerely conflicted and you're not letting go of your faith, you're still holding on, but you just got some serious questions about it. You're saying, mm. God, it, it doesn't make sense right. what's happening around me. God, if you can just speak a word to encourage me, to keep me holding on. I'm tempted to let go, but I'm not going to let go uh, because my life depends on me holding. But God, I just need some strength right now. And your word says that if we wait upon you, you will renew our strength. God, I, I just need a word from you right now. And God, in that moment, he spoke to her and he led her to Psalms 139. Listen, I just want to stop and say, I praise God for a godly wife. Someone that can get a word to the Lord. And from the Lord. That were, when her husband is in bed sleeping and snoring, she's over here praying and crying out to God. She, Lord led her to Psalms 139. And Psalms 139 ministered her to her soul. And it said... That I know everything. And then it said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That when you were formed, being formed in your womb, I saw you and I knew you and I formed every fiber of your being. And God began to minister to her and tell her that, listen, who Emily is right now is exactly who I want her to be. There's nothing you could have done to evade this situation. This was wrought in glory. And it will be to the glory of the Father. And her spirit was lifted. And the spirit of depression that was tempted to overcome her at that moment was rebuked and left. And she began to declare praises and thanksgiving and healing over our daughter. And, and I woke up and she told me what had happened the night before. I said, baby, why didn't you wake me and let me experience it with you? You know, this was just me and God here. You just, this is just me and God. I said, that's all right. And, but then I went into my prayer closet and I said, God, God, I need a word from you. She gave a word to her. Is there a word from the Lord for the husband? And God spoke to me. He led me to Hebrews in chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 2, one says, her face is the substance of hope, things of hope for, the evidence of things not seen. And then we always skip over verse 2. There's not much commentary about 2. But verse 2 is even the most powerful text of all of Hebrews 11. For verse 2 says, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Good report. You see, when we think of faith and when we read the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, when we read it, we see all these positive things that are happening and all these good things. And so if you read, I mean, if you read the uh, uh, verse, what is it, verse 30, Hebrews 11 and verse, uh, yeah, verse 30, it says, by faith, the walls of Jericho came down. I mean, that's a positive thing. Uh, verse 31, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish. That's a positive thing. Uh, uh, and what more shall we say for the time of Gideon, verse 32, and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel, verse 33, who through faith of do kings, that's a good thing, right? Who work righteousness, that's a good thing. So we look at faith and we say, man, if you have faith, good things are going to happen to you. Keep reading. Mm -hmm. And do it hardship. Thank, verse 34, quench the violence of fire and escape the edge of the sword. All positives of weakness were made strong. All positives became valiant in battle, turned to flight. I mean, these, you have faith, God will move on your behalf. Women receive their dead, raised to life again. Uh, but then, but then it, 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 it shifts. Yeah. It says, others were tortured. Mm -hmm. yes. Not accepting deliverance. That they might obtain a better resurrection. And then it gets worse. Still others had trials of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of change. Lord, they have faith. If they have faith, why are negative things happening to them? <laughs> they were, verse 37, they were stoned, cut in two. You talking about I believe in God? I'm holding on to his word? Yeah. And I'm still going to be taken out? 
They wandered about in sheepskins and in goatskins, being destitute and afflicted and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves. And then the Lord spoke to me in the next verse. And all these, having obtained a good testimony. And God said, Seth, faith is not intended to be given or to be exercised to obtain good things. Faith is exercised to obtain a good report. Oh, look at that, that when your life is over and all is said and done, whether it worked out or didn't work out, you had faith and you hold on, held on to the promise of God that God will stand before all of creation and say, well done, How powerful. good and faithful. That it might not work out the way you want it to work out. And, that, 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 and yet you're holding on to the promise and you're, and you're believing the promises of God but when it's all said and done I'm more, I'm more concerned with having a good report from God than I am about obtaining whatever I'm praying for when it's over and the, and the world is finished I want God to say Seth, you are faithful you heard my word you stayed with my word you did not doubt my word you were faithful that's the word. That's that is the fruit of faith. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Delays come, but if you read Hebrews 11, many of the prophets of old died during the delay, and they never experienced the promise. But they have a good testimony. 